Hello everyone. Today we're going to be talking about how password safe works. So the first step we're going to need to do is discover those types of assets within your environment. And we can do that with scans from our solution, adding them manually or adding them uh, by API imports. And then once we're able to discover all of those assets and accounts, we are able to import them into the system into what we call a managed account where it's being managed. Now that means it's being rotated on an automatic basis every day, every 30 days, every 60 days. And that happens automatically. So the discovery, the management then flows into providing sessions for those end users. So now that we can find them and manage them, we can now give these sessions out to our end users providing adaptive access and full visibility into what those privileged accounts are doing using our auditing capability. So any session that's being accessed can then be audited and viewed on the back end from a DVR perspective. Real quickly, just looking at the password safe architecture and what we'll be covering today in specifically password safe cloud where we have deployed our Beyond Trust Cloud Appliance in the Azure Cloud, and we're accessing it via the web UI as well as the API. So jumping into the use case, just make it full screen here. So I'm signing into Password Safe as a standard user with my two-factor account. And once I'm logged in, I'm gonna go to my password safe end user portal where I'm able to see all of my systems that I have access to, whether it's systems that I have added as my favorite systems, systems that I have recently used in the past, and the tagline systems means for local system accounts. Now you can see this system name is SAFO1 and it's an account called PWS admin. And same for databases, we have the same examples where that system name, the account name you're checking out, account description, and the platform it's on. For say domain linked accounts, you'll see that directory column filled out because these are all the Active Directory accounts or LDAP accounts we can store and manage. As well as applications, we can give end users access through password safe to a specific application such as a, a web interface or a MMC Snap-in. And the one we're going to be focusing on today is in cloud here. And so what we define cloud access as is pretty much any website and we do manage and rotate Amazon and East, Amazon EC2 and Azure Virtual Machine, as well as the web interfaces. And that's what we're going to take a look at today. So jumping into the EC2 production system here, you can see I have an account called EC2 Admin. And the platform is Amazon and just some information about the application and the work group. But if I wanted to check out this account called EC2 Admin, I would just simply click on it. And I can provide a reason if required. I can integrate this with ServiceNow. I can change a custom resolution and configure smart sizing if I want to. But for now, we're just going to click this application session, which will download an RDP session. And once I click this, it'll automatically log me into with that EC2 admin account with that AWS website resource. Here you can see it's populating all that information. I haven't typed anything. It's all just pre-populated from our, our API and the scripts. So here you can see I have access to Amazon Web Services and I can get to EC2. I can configure my instances. I'm going to just search for IAM at the top here. And there I can get to whatever resources I need to get to within that Amazon Web Interface. And all this is being recorded in this interface, so we won't see it on the front end, but on the back end, we'll take a look at it here in a couple of minutes. Closing out this session, 
I'm just going to take a look at how we're managing this count or, or rotating it automatically. And so looking into our managed systems, here you see, I'll just zoom in. Here you see we have an EC2 production system and it's an entity type cloud for platform Amazon. And to view some details here, we're just going to take a look at what we call a managed account. Now, when we say managed, that means we can automatically rotate that account or manually if we need to. And here you see we have that account we checked out, EC2 admin, and it's being auto managed. The last change date was at this time, and it looks like it's going to change again today at 1245. And of course, I can come in here and manually change this password if I need to. I can come in here and look at password history. Of course, the most recent password would be checked out from the password safe console that we looked at, but it has previous passwords that it's set that you're able to come in here. If maybe a system got out of sync or something, you can come back and look at previous passwords that were used, which is another great feature. Looking at the same functionality for our Azure production system, here you see we have a system called Azure production. It is also a cloud type entity. The platform is Azure. And we're just going to take a look at some of these advanced details in the managed accounts. And very similarly for AWS, we have for Azure a cloud website account called PS Cloud MA01 at thumbskyward.com. It's just a test domain we created. And here you can see it's being auto managed and it's actually set to change on the first of every month. So that looks like it's at the 30 day policy. And here I can just change this password as well manually if I need to. And there you can see it successfully changed that password. Jumping back over to the password safe end user interface, we're going to now check out that account we just rotated. The Azure production account you see here under my favorites. PS Cloud MA01 Thumb Skyward. I'm just going to click that button and I can put a reason, put in smart sizing or my custom resolution. And I also have an option here to retrieve a password, which I can, of course, come in here, retrieve the password, view it, copy and paste it and do what I need to. But you can disable this button so your users will never know what that password is. The only button they would see really is this application session. They would come in here, click the application session button. It would download them an RDP client, much as we saw before. The end user would open that up. And it will automatically log them in with the stored credentials in password safe. There you see now I'm in Microsoft Azure and I can access my Azure Active Directory. I can come in here and look at my users and groups and do whatever I need to come in here and modify anything I need to. Now, as um, taking a look at some of the monitoring functionality, so here I have this active session for an end user. As an administrator, I can take a look at what we call active sessions. And there you can see I have my one active session and I can actually lock it if I need to for that end user. And they will then get a, a big lock on their screen and they can't do anything. And maybe it's um, some alert that has come up. And you can also terminate that session if you need to from the management console so that end user is no longer able to access that session until you uh, approve it or allow for that access. Taking a look at some of our reports that we call our replay session, or sorry, our DVR playback. And there you can see we have our two sessions that we just checked out, our EC2 production system, and it's AWS console. There's the requester eFlood and an RDP session for 51 seconds. And the size is very small. As you can see, we compress our images down to uh, keep up to 90 days out of the box. So I'm just going to open this up like you would a DVR session and zoom out here. Pressing play, it's just going to play like a, a DVR.
playback and I can speed it up. I can add notes here at the bottom. I can pause it, reset, jump to a next action. There you see it's pretty much just passing the credentials. I can mark it as reviewed if, if that's a requirement for your auditing purposes. And there you can see as I typed in IAM in the console up top, I can jump right to that. If I click it right where I typed it in, jump back to it. And there I typed IAM and I went to the IAM dashboard. And of course it shows timestamps for all those keystroke logs as well, as well as the mouse clicks. And I just wanted to mention that the keystroke logs are indexed. So if I wanted to come in here and search for all of my recorded sessions, anywhere someone ran the command sudo, I could run that search and see all of these different areas where someone maybe came in here and there they ran the sudo command and I can jump right to it and see what they were doing. So that's another really great feature of password safe. We just reset that and we'll look at our Azure production recording here. There you see checked out by me, the requester. Duration was 68 seconds. We'll just take a look at it real quickly. Playing that back, we'll jump forward here. And there you see there's that session that I was checking out, all of the access that I was browsing through. And we'll just get to the part where I locked the session. And there you can see. The session was locked and then it was terminated by the administrative user. So last but not least, we're going to take a look at reporting, our analytics and reporting section. Now you see we have a couple of reports, but primarily we're going to be focusing on a password safe. So of course we have activity that contains detailed history of all password safe changes made to the appliance from an administrator perspective a managed account password report, password safe update activity, tons of reports in here to fully view what your end users are doing, not only from an administrative perspective, but also an end user perspective. And probably the most important one is this account password by last stage. And if I just run this report, this report, uh, that first discovery we looked at on uh, the slide where it's running that discovery scan, we're able to scan either an IP range or uh, DNS names and identify what privileged accounts or non-privileged accounts are on that system, what the password age of is, of is of those accounts, what privilege type that account is, and when they've last logged into that account. So if you see an account that hasn't been logged into in maybe five years and the password age is 10 years old, that might be a low-hanging fruit. You could go in there and manage and rotate those passwords 